All right, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this video, we will be reviewing a classical uh, fluid network analysis technique known as the Hardy Cross Method. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so let's do a, a quick review. Uh, so if we have two uh, fixed grade nodes connected by a pipe, the flow will be going from the uh, high energy uh, node to the uh, lower energy node. And conservation of energy tells us that the uh, energy in fixed grade 1 minus the head loss between the fixed grades is what's left over in fixed grade node 2. And we can rearrange that as so. And in this problem, we are going to Hardy Cross Method is a root finding technique. So we're going to be uh, setting this energy equation equal to 0 and solving for the flow uh, that satisfies that condition. Okay, do a, so a quick uh, review of head loss uh, using Darcy Weisbach's equation. And we are going to take a simpler approach and define a loss coefficient C. And uh, when we do that, then the equation, how to calculate C with the from the friction factor and the minor loss coefficients is as so. Nothing about the Hardy Cross method forces us to do that. It's just uh, simpler. Uh, we could uh, calculate the uh, friction factor in each iteration using that using the flow for that iteration uh, but uh, the focus on this video is the uh, the technique of hardy cross not on how to calculate the uh, the friction factor all right we'll also be using the continuity equation so if we have a multi-pipe junction or node the flow coming in is equal to the flow coming out and also sometimes we might have a demand at a junction or a node and again uh, the flow coming into the junction is equal to the flow leaving the junction. All right, well, if all we ever had was a pipe like this, uh, likely uh, we would never need a, a, a numerical method to solve it. And full disclaimer, the Hardy Cross method is one of the, uh, one of the original uh, methods that's used in fluid networks, as I stated previously. Um, it's also not the best in many ways. Uh, there are other techniques uh, such as the linear method and others that uh, have, are more robust in terms of uh, convergence uh, but it is a classic technique and uh, students of uh, fluid networks uh, hopefully will have some type of understanding also mention that there are several types of uh, hardy cross methods uh, single path adjustment multi-path adjustment and uh, they can be used with the flow equations flow equations you basically uh, guess the flow and iterate until you satisfy the energy and continuity equations Node equations, you guess the uh, node, the head at the nodes or junctions, uh, back calculate the flows, and again, iterate until you satisfy the energy and continuity equations. Uh, single path adjustment and multi -path, uh, simultaneous path adjustments, that'll come a little bit clearer as we work through the examples. Uh, we'll be mentioning this, but then the classical Hardy Cross method and the examples in this video uh, relate to using the flow equations and the single path adjustment method. Okay, so let's do a quick overview and a hardy cross method for single path adjustment and using the flow equations but well, we need to identify all paths in the network well what do we mean by, mean by a path a path is either a loop or a pseudo loop and in this video we're not going to be going into uh, detailed definitions of loops or pseudo loops but basically loops are self-explanatory uh, you have a series of pipes that uh, form a loop pseudo loops are uh, paths that go from one fixed grade to another fixed grade Conservation of energy, we're going to be applying that for each path. And then we are going to set it equal to zero. And then we're going to go through a root finding technique to find the flow that satisfies that. We're also going to be applying continuity to each node or pipe junction. And we're going to guess the initial flows in each pipe. And we are distinguishing between pipes and paths. A path is made up of multiple pipes. And one of the... Uh, Constraints on the initial flows is that they must satisfy continuity. Then we're going to be using a gradient technique uh, to find the roots or the flow uh, that satisfy this. In the process, we're going to be defining a path flow correction factor. And when we do that, we are going to be updating all the flows in that path uh, with that correction factor. And we're doing a single path adjustment method, so we are going to be determining a separate correction factor for each path. And in the end, we iterate into all the uh, flow correction factors approach zero. Okay, I know this probably doesn't make much sense now, but hopefully we're going to work. Well, we're going to step through a couple of examples, and hopefully that this will be have a little bit more meaning. 
Okay, so here's our first example network. We have two fixed gray nodes, one at a high energy, one at a low energy. And at various locations or nodes, we have demands placed upon that. And so, uh, again, we are going to be solving the energy equation, the continuity equation for all these pipes and junctions. Well, first, let's identify the junctions. Here we have three. We placed a junction at each location where we have a demand. And go ahead and identify our pipe. So we have one, two, three, four pipes. And, well, how many paths do we have? Well, we have one. We have one pseudo loop, and that is going from fixed grade node one to fixed grade node two. So we're only going to be calculating one flow correction factor. So our unknowns right now are the four flows. And... Let's go ahead and write the energy equation. So the fixed grade node at 1 is equal to the fixed grade node at 2 plus all the head losses or the head losses of the four pipes summed together. Continuity. Well, we need three equations. So the flow coming in to junction 1 is equal to the flow leaving out pipe 2 and the demand. Similar for junction 2 and junction 3. All right, so now we're going to uh, plug in our expressions for the head loss for each of the four pipes. Uh, we're going to be uh, provided this uh, head loss coefficient, C1, C2, C3, and C4. Again, we could be calculating those on the fly, but that's not the focus of this equation. So this is our energy equation. We're going to define that as function F. And we are going to be setting this function uh, equal to zero. And our goal is to find Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 such that, yeah, this function is equal to zero. All right. To do that, we are going to be using a newton raphson like method. And let's review the newton raphson method. It's an it's a iterative point uh, method where we have an equation and we make an initial guess, x0, and then we update those guesses by adding to it a correction factor which consists of the function divided by the derivative of the function at the previous iteration. And so that correction factor is delta x. That's analogous to what we'll be doing. And uh, we we're just simply calling it delta q. And you just iterate until the function is equal to zero or the correction factor is equal to zero. Okay, so let's, uh, let's dive into this example. Again, the continuity equations must be satisfied with the initial flow guesses. So our initial guess for flow 1 is just 5. For pipe 2, 3. For pipe 3, 0. And for pipe 4, minus 5, which means it's going uh, in the opposite direction. All right, so you can take a second to check that we do, in fact, uh, satisfy continuity for all the uh, these junctions. Now we're going to solve for a flow correction factor. Again, this is based upon a newton raphson technique. And our flow, so we're going to be solving for, in this case, what was delta x. We're going to call that delta q. And it's just going to be the function in the numerator divided by the derivative of the function with respect to q in the denominator. So we have our energy equation in the numerator. We've taken the derivative of that equation with respect to q and put that in the denominator. So... For pipe 1, we have 2 times C1 times Q1. And some are expressions for pipes 2, 3, and 4. The derivative of a fixed grade with respect to Q is 0. And again, the minus sign comes through from the newton raphson technique. Okay, so we're going to start off with initial guesses, calculate a flow correction factor. And then we're going to update our flows. And we're going to add the flow correction to all pipes in the path this says flows in the path you could say you could say either so flow one is going to be q1 plus delta q same for q2 and same for q3 so we're adding the same flow correction factor for all pipes in the network and this is how we maintain uh satisfying continuity so let's work through this and so we have our initial guesses in this table and we can calculate the value in the numerator and the denominator. These steps not really necessary. 
and we get a flow correction factor. So we're going to take this flow correction factor and add it to the four flows, and these will be our flows for our next iteration. So you notice each of these flows have added, has had 6.68 added to it. So now we do the calculations, and we get a new flow correction factor, continuing, adding in the new flow correction factor through the uh, flows in iteration one. And we see that our flow correction factor is indeed getting smaller. And we can continue. And our fourth iteration, we can call that to be converged. And so this is our final answer. All right, now let's look at a different network. So here we have a three energy nodes. And one at the highest energy is providing flow, arguably, to, either, to both flow uh, energy grade node 2 or fixed grade node 3. That may be true. We don't really know the direction of flow in this pipe. We are going to assume that and see where it ends up. All right, so taking a similar approach, let's identify our junction and our pipes. And in this case, we have two pseudo loops where we have two paths. Uh, path number, well, we'll call it path A, uh, is shown here in green. It goes from fixed grade node 1 to fixed grade node 2. And so this is the energy equation for path A. And we can identify path B going from fixed grade node 1 to fixed grade node 3. Again, we have the energy equation for path 3. So we're going to have two uh, path flow correction factors that we calculate. Denoted as a flow correction factor A, flow correction factor B. And when we calculate those at each iter after each iteration, we need to update the flows. And let's go with starting with pipe three. It's only in, in path Bravo. So it's going to be updated with flow correction factor for path Bravo. Similarly, pipe two is only in pipe is only in path alpha. So it's only updated with the flow correction factor for alpha but pipe one you'll notice is in both paths and so it's updated with both flow correction factors so let's put in some values and hopefully uh this will this makes sense so again starting off with our initial guesses for flow in this case i chose 10 6 and 4 that satisfies continuity for this junction and we can calculate the flow correction factors for path a and path b and before we get into it, let's re review how we update uh, the flows. And so we can calculate the uh, flow correction factors. Now, for iteration one, for flow one, it receives the, uh, the sum of both flow correction factors. And you can take a second and do the rip to see we've done that. But for pipe two, it only receives the flow correction factor for path alpha and similarly for pipe three it only receives a flow correction factor for pipe bravo once again we calculate a new set of flow correction factors and keep iterating and well you can see that this might take a while to converge because our initial guesses weren't that great and so uh, uh, let's skip a few steps and let's go to iteration number six and now we see that our flow correction factors are indeed getting smaller. And we look at iteration number 13. Uh, we see now that our, our flow correction factors are getting pretty small. And we're going to call this uh, satisfactory convergence. And so these are the flows in the, uh, in the three pipes. Uh, based upon significant digits, uh, the continuity equation is still satisfied. And uh, that's how we uh, use the Hardy-Cross method. Again, the Hardy-Cross method is a bit outdated. It's still simple and uh, suitable for even hand calculations. Uh, but uh, there are more powerful techniques out there. So I hope you found this uh, video useful. If so, please like and subscribe. And more importantly, have a great day.